Good morning. It is a beautiful Wednesday outside. Nice and cold. Nice and cold, but sunny. Sunny for a change. Welcome to Prepper Talk Radio here on K Talk. We are so excited to have you here. What? What? <laughs> Bring it down a little more. I'm getting a micromanaged. Down, a little more. No, it's fine. If I go any lower, we won't hear it again later. Well, I don't have my headphones We're on. We're arguing so here I can't on the radio. Tell. I can hear it on the speakers. I'm I'm so excited that you guys get to hear us argue on the radio today. <laughs> hey, that's over the, the dumbest thing in the world. Yeah, hey, that's we figure this out as we go. We do it on the fly. We don't have a whole lot of time to prep for these shows, so we just Okay, so today, prepping 101. We're wrapping it up. Brought to you by Survival Medical. The only first aid kit that's designed, engineered even, to last 20 years. And this is what we actually carry in our own cars, in our own mm-hmm. bags. Our, whether you want to call it an inch bag, and in, in, in I'm never coming home. Yep. Whether, whether you call it a bug out bag, as in goodbye, everybody. Um, if you're like We're, me and, and Shane, we have multiple use bags. One, one of the most common bags we have is kind of our EDC kit. Yep. Kind of um, get, our, home our bags, get home bag. what I call bag. it. Yeah. Um, GHB, uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I've seen that. There, you're going to see in the prepping world. You're going to see a lot of different acronyms all over the place. Just call it it's your kit. You know, yeah. if you're former military, you might call it your kit. Your kit, your bag. I don't care. Ninety six hour kit, seventy two hour kit. I don't care really what you call it. What I care is that you have resources, that you have the right gear, and that it's not going to kill you. So today we're going to wrap everything up from from prepping one one. The last few weeks have been all about the basics. You know, we've talked about water. We talked about well. Let's go back to the beginning. We have talked about shelter. Yeah. One, one thing I realized with trying to figure out how to wrap up this prepping 101 is that there is no way to wrap it up. I mean, there's there's so much content, so much we could talk about that um, we, it's hard to encompass everything in a basic. We'll, we'll made, let's call this an introductory course instead of prepping right. 101. It's more of an introduction to prepping. It's where to begin, right? Rather than a, a 101. And I think that uh, you know, it's kind of a wrap up. Uh, the very most basics, mm-hmm. how to get started in prepping, which we talked about, you know, l- over the last few weeks, where we talked about, you know, shelter being really the number one should be your number one concern. Uh, that is, it's you know, the most often forgotten. It is because it's so weird. We take it for granted. You know, it was fun because in in uh, sociology and in, in college, uh, we studied Maslow's hierarchy of mm-hmm. needs. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the most basic needs, mm. the most important needs, is shelter. Yeah. Psychologically, what that does for us is unparalleled. Exactly, it's not only just physical to keep you from uh, getting hypothermia in, in you know in winter and colder temperatures, but it is it's absolutely psychological. Absolutely, yeah. And it's it's fun to see as people kind of get that aha moment and they realize how important that is. Mm. Uh, it doesn't have to be elaborate. You know, we, we were talking to some friends that that uh, actually to Alan Kay who was yeah. on alone, alone exactly. and he talked about how how it's so funny how people will think, oh, I'm going to build this elaborate shelter mm-hmm. with you know three feet of insulation, and mm-hmm. and they're on their way from one point to another point. That, right, this is five or six hour or an entire day process depending right. on where you're at. And what Shane's brought up a lot, and I think this is is far overlooked, is the importance of shelter as not just your clothing, mm-hmm. the clothing you wear is shelter, but also fire is a shelter. Mm-hmm. Right, so a combination of a, a small tarp and a fire can outperform a lo- a big, yeah. large shelter that you're going to build. As long as you have, uh, you know, some good outerwear, you know, like mm-hmm. a nice Cortex jacket, you have that is my first line uh, of shelter. Is actually having the right clothing, the right shoes, the right socks. You know, even you know, not wearing cotton, wearing polypropylene, wearing uh, polyester, whatever you know, synthetic wool. materials or wool. And then having a good shell later that acts as essentially as your tent. Or if uh, you really want to go awesome, get some alpaca fur. Alpaca, huh? Oh, yeah. That, that alpaca wool is I pretty dang awesome. I know you have a dream of your alpaca ranch. I will have an alpaca days. ranch called the Alpacalypse Ranch. Excellent. It'll be awesome. And you'll, you'll shear your, alpa- uh, your alpaca lipses? Alpacas. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to name them hey. everything from, from Doomsday to Destructo and Nuke. We're going to give them fun Very names. Cool. I'm kidding. We're not going to do that. But... <laughs> The the point we're trying to make is 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 shelter is your first and foremost. Mm-hmm. When you're going out in the cold winter days like today, mm-hmm. you know shelter your jacket yep. should be more than just a jacket. And I see so many people out there with just you know short sleeve t shirts. You know, especially kids. I mean, mm-hmm. parents tell your kids take so, a jacket. I saw three of them cool. walking to school yeah. today with no exactly. jacket. I'm like, what is it's wrong? Fifteen with you? degrees out there. Thirteen but degrees, and it's. I was the same way when I was a kid. Yeah, I wasn't. 
So hey, you got a call. The value is though layering as well. Layering. Let's yes. let's take this call and see what they have to say about shelter. Hey, thanks for calling K Talk. You're on the air. We're talking about shelter. What did you have to say? Yeah, um, you know, one thing that I've done in the past that works out really well is if I've built a small shelter and I don't want to fire inside the shelter because I'm making it out of wood, bows, branches, or what have you, mm-hmm. putting in rocks that don't explode, heating them up, yep. and then uh, bringing them into the shelter is a phenomenal way of heating a small place without endangering yourself with a uh, accidental fire catching your shelter on fire. That's a great point. And it's simple, something you can do simply. Like if you have an extra large, an extra large pair of, of uh, wool socks, right? Mm-hmm. You've got some good f- stones around the fire. Put some stones that are mm-hmm. smaller size there. Pull those out. Slip we'll grab the them with a sock. Slip it inside the sock. Double wrap it. Throw it in your bag. Mm-hmm. You know, huddle up with those. You're not going to get burned that way. You're going to stay warm. You know, that thermal mass of that yeah. little rock actually lasts a long time. It does. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, even having a large rock on the other side of your fire to reflect that toward you, mm-hmm. uh, keeping it out of your shelter so you, you don't burn your shelter down, obviously. But uh, Yeah, but I don't think I've ever heard you as a talk about that before, but I've actually seen, you know, homemade shelters and Boy Scouts catch on fire. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, you know, mm-hmm. how do you heat a small shelter like that? and keep yourself safe because the last thing you want to do in a survival situation is uh, suffer from burns. You know, that's a really good point. So there's a lot of survival shelters that you can learn to make that, for example, um, a Sasquatch Sasquatch nest Mm -hmm. is a survival shelter. Really, you're just building a big pile of leaves with windbreaks around it, and you're climbing into the middle of it and using that as an insulation, right? There's also the types of shelter like the the old-fashioned, the typical Mm -hmm. Um, Mm lean-to. Those aren't shelters you put a fire in. They never are. Um, another one which I've seen people make a mistake with is they'll see an outcropping of rocks, and they'll see, like, this sheet rock coming out, and they're like, oh, look, a cave, and I'll get mm-hmm. in there, and I'll mm-hmm. light a fire. Well, over the years, there's water inside the cracks of those rocks, and as soon as that expands or heat is uneven on one end to the rock to the other, those rocks will become brittle and snap and crush you. So you want to make sure that whatever you're using for shelter, um, if it's a lean-to, your fire is away from you. Mm-hmm. But that it's reflected back to you. Yeah, and you know? as as for shelters, I think uh, you know it's hard to just carry a big tent. I mean, throw it mm-hmm. on your bug out bag. It's not practical. You know, it's not something you're going to use all the time. But for me, a good tarp, uh, a good uh, you know whether it's actually made of canvas or a more lightweight uh, tarp, but something that, re- that reflects heat. I've got one that's dark on one side and reflective on the other, so that I can use that as a lean to. Uh, and then it reflects my heat back at me, and also dark on one side, so it collects the heat of the sun on the other side. So uh, that's my most basic shelter for other than having a jacket, having a, a, something to sleep in, like a a, uh, a, th- a bl- thermal blanket, mm-hmm. uh, and then having a tarp of some sort to construct a lean-to, uh, something that's quick. And I think that's the key point, is, is something you can get up quick to get yourself out of a storm. Or, awesome. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Awesome. And we'll- one little caveat on putting rocks on fire for heat sources that um, I learned the hard way is that there are some rocks that do explode. So you do have to be careful about what kind of rock you put in there. And, that, yeah. and like you were saying with that slate, if that slate heats up and there's an inconsistency in that, you're right. It will bring that whole thing down, and yep. you do have to be careful of that. So anyhow, great show, guys. Thanks. Hey, thanks so much. Yeah, don't pull the rocks out of the river to put around yeah. your, your fire. we got it another caller. Let's bring them on the air. All right. Hey, thanks for calling K-Talk. You're on the air with Prepper Talk Radio. <laughs> Boy, that was quick. Well, <laughs> yeah, you know, you didn't uh, emphasize. I know you have in previous shows, but you might have some new listeners. Why shelter is so important that hydrothermia, hypothermia can get mm-hmm. in a matter of hours in, in uh, zero weather if, if you don't have some way of uh, maintaining body heat. But, uh, I mean, just, just common sense, the use of socks for mittens. And you just mentioned layer, layering in mm-hmm. passage. Uh, but uh, so important. But uh, even layers of T-shirts and the protection of extremities, uh, it's important you exercise your feet within your shoes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and as long as you've got feeling in them, you're okay, but if you don't, you better bundle or do something, or you'll be losing toes and the use of your feet. Absolutely. Yeah. And then, then it becomes very psychological as well. <laughs> well, the, the, the quickest way to go into hypothermia is not realize your body has some protective uh, functions built in, shivering, 
mm-hmm. and this Absolutely. sort of thing. And uh, uh, but those people that have ever been in these situations, and many people have, including myself. Hey, you you want to think positive during the whole thing because uh, uh, that uh, other people have used common sense applications, and that. Uh, uh, in fact, if they get themselves a Boy Scout handbook, it'd be a good thing. Absolutely. You, you know, in the fire, I mean, important to emphasize being able to start fires under bad circumstances. Absolutely. Thank and, you so much for your call. And finding pit, a pitchy pine tree. I mean, there's all sorts of, you yep. know, if you're yep. lost, I mean, being found. Uh, rather well, let's. Let's let's keep the focus back on the shelter for a little bit. Thank you so much for your call. Yeah, well, we'll bring in some experts here in the next uh, couple of weeks, couple of months, and talk about specifically about fire building. I think that's a great great Absolutely. topic. Absolutely. But I think the, what our last caller was pointing out is that the, the reason why we need shelter goes back to the yep. very simplest thing: the number one killer in the wild is not the animals. It's, it's not, not wolves. It's not, not bears. It's it's not hunger. It's not dying of thirst. It is exposure, which is. Mm-hmm. The two different types of, you know, one of, one of the results of exposure is hypothermia. Mm-hmm. The other type of exposure is overheating, heat stroke. You know, those types of things are going to kill you, and they kill you, I think it's at a 67 or 68% rate higher than anything else. Mm-hmm. So they're the number one killers. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what you're going to deal with, you know. Yeah. It doesn't take long. And the thing about hypothermia is, and same with heat stroke, those, it's not just quickly resolved and taken care of. Right. Those those effects last for days. Yep. Um, hard to recover from, absolutely. Oh, very hard to recover from. So you have to realize, okay, if I am going into hypothermia, I need that extra body heat, I need that warmth, and I need to let my body recover. Otherwise, I'm done. I'm sunk. And, and the thing is, it's so simple to carry a good jacket with you or mm-hmm. to carry a tarp or an emergency blanket. Put it in your kit, and that will, I wouldn't say guarantee, but that will highly increase your chance of survival just by having a little bit of shelter. Absolutely. Anyway, so moving on, I guess, from shelter. Yeah. We'll wrap this this segment's basically been wrapping it up on yep. shelter, right? So the next thing we want to talk about excuse me. You okay there, Scott? Yeah, oh my gosh. Frog in my throat <laughs> for a second there. The next thing we want to talk about so we've talked about shelter, water and then food. Mm-hmm. Right. Water totally forgotten. I don't know how this is so overlooked in so yeah. many you know, plans. And Scott had mentioned we were talking with uh, Alan Kay uh, of Alone the other day, and he's going to be at PrepperCon. Absolutely. And He'll be uh, teaching some everyday carry classes and some uh, some classes on basic preparedness, the things that the most most common overlooked things mm-hmm. that will kill you the quickest. Yeah. And so you know, in, in, our, in our conversation, I think the common theme was, okay, you know, he was on this island for 57 days. And, of course, the first thing is, you know, set up a shelter. Once that's established, water. Okay, where it, and that was his common theme. Where am I going to get water? Where am I going to get water? Wherever he goes, he has a, has a provision of, okay, how am I going to get water? How am I going to carry water? How am I going to purify water? Yep. Uh, because, you can, like you say, you can last three weeks without food, but only about three days without water. So, so it's knowing that plan and also mm-hmm. having that plan etched in your mind, you mm-hmm. know. Shelter, water, food. Although Shelter, if your stomach water, is, is rumbling, you may think, man, I'm hungry. I've got to find some food. Right. But most likely you're going to feel that thirst first, and you're going to say, oh, I need to find some water first. Well, most of us but, haven't gone more than two hours without food. Yeah. I mean, it, there's, there's snack machines everywhere. There's drive-ins everywhere. You can mm-hmm. go get whatever you want anytime. We're living this, this on-demand convenient. lifestyle that we've actually crippled our, our self-control. That we, yes. As a society, many of us have a hard time going more than two hours without eating, and we become what's called hangry. Mm -hmm. The hunger and the angriness become one, Mm -hmm. and that goes away when we're fed, which is an interesting psychological mix. I'd love to have a psychologist come and explain how and why that happens. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's it's a sign of how foolish we are as a people because we can't go without. Mm -hmm. We can't function at a high level and be kind to other people when we're hungry. Yeah, you know, if, if you if you watch the show alone, I think uh, one of the common themes you'll notice is, yes, they show foraging for food. Yes, they show water, uh, you know, looking for water, get, gathering water. But the thing that they spend most of the time on probably is maintaining their shelters. Absolutely. And, and we're going to talk a little bit more about water and food in the next section. So stay tuned. We're brought to you by Survival Medical. That's survival-medical.com. The only first aid t- kit, tougher than nature. 
Welcome back to Prepper Talk Radio, AM 630, K-Talk. And you can check out the new ktalkmedia.com website, which is pretty dang awesome. It is and nice. it has, we've got the weather up there, we've got the news up there, um, some of our, our own news, mm-hmm. and then that mainstream gobbledygook sometimes. Yeah, yeah, but the important thing is to see what we're saying, uh, because we are the alternate news. And here at Prepper Talk Radio, our focus is less on the news and more on how we should be responding to it. Yeah, and don't forget about the archives on ktalkmedia.com, as well as uh, Scott and I record these. Uh, we take video of all our broadcasts and put them on YouTube, so you can join in there and listen to our previous broadcasts there as well, and f- feel free to comment. And So if, if you wanted to call in and make a comment and uh, on a particular show, feel free to make a comment there on, on YouTube, and we can interact with you there. We would uh, we definitely love that, because this is what we love to do. This is yeah. our passion, and we w- would love to chat with you guys. As well as... Uh, our, our Facebook page is probably our most popular communication mm-hmm. tool. Go to our Facebook page, Prepper Talk Radio. Um, you'll find us there. Our pictures are there. Our, our fun orange Yay. logos there. And, mm-hmm. you know, the whole purpose of this is to help be a resource to the community. So that's why we do this. Um, we really don't make any money doing it. Mm-mm. It doesn't even cover our g- cost of gas to come <laughs> <No>. in. <laughs> but we do it because we feel like because we know more, um, because we live this way, and because we're passionate about it, um, we feel like it's our responsibility to help as many people as we can. Mm-hmm. And so that's why we do this. So let us know your thoughts. Let us know what you'd like us to cover, and, and we'll schedule that out and bring in special guests. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So we talked about shelter. We're going to start talking about water now. We actually had Fortress Clothing on during the break. They yep. were one of okay. the sponsors. Yep. You know, great, great shelter. Mm-hmm. Um, not the best for hard, working hard. Like if you're going to go chop down trees and stuff, you're going to overheat real mm-hmm. fast. Yeah. But if you're laying around... If you're just trying to survive, man, those things are amazing. Or if you're in the real cold doing snowmobiling, mm. dude, those things are so awesome. Kind of like wearing a sleeping bag around. Yeah, it's like it's 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 a fun sleeping bag to wear. It's it's really a mobile sleeping bag, but it's way warmer than a sleeping bag. It's a little amazing. bit easier to and it work wicks to. the moisture yeah. off. So if you're if you're doing some, you know, fishing, ice fishing, best outfit to wear. Yeah, no, I amazing. Can see that. Yeah, absolutely. So, but water. I mean, okay. So we've got our shelter. Right. Let's talk water. How long can I last without water, Shane? You, I don't know. Me, <laughs> I don't know either, honestly. I've never tried. Uh, but the rule of thumb is three days. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yes, it's inconvenient when you go thirsty for a couple hours or uh, even a day. But, yeah, you can you can survive. So, like we mentioned before, shelter should still be your number one concern. But once you've got that figured out, you got to figure out the water. Yep. Now, I guess what I'm kind of saying is, okay, if we're out in a wilderness setting and, you know, you find yourself lost or something and you've, you've run out of water. But I think in most cases, you know, we're, we actually have a roof over our head, right? Mm-hmm. We have a car we could live in if we had to. Yep. We probably have a tent you know, stashed in the garage or in the basement that we could set up. Uh, so I think those are the most obvious. So that's why I think, Scott, you were saying we don't think about shelter a lot because we always have shelter with us, whether it's our well, car or whatever it might be. We... we Typically have shelter with us, mm-hmm. but what if there's an earthquake? Yep. I mean, then there's a, a shelter issue, but we've, we've, you find your solution as quick as you can, mm-hmm. and your first day, you're not trying to rebuild your whole house, right? You're building something to keep the wind and the rain and the, and, and the snow and the elements off of you. Mm-hmm. It can be very small. The smaller, the better, because it'll hold in your heat. And right? a safe place. And safe. Mm-hmm. Now, the next thing is, is the water issue is you've got to rehydrate, so say if there is an earthquake, like you said. Yeah, and you've got to find like a water gone. solution. So what I think is is more important than find, you know having all of your water stored in your in your property, because that's really hard to do. Mm-hmm. You know, get a few weeks minimum. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I have a month and a half, two months of, of water at my house for everyone that lives there. Mm-hmm. Now, that's fine and dandy, but eventually that's going to run out. Yep. And I think that's where most plans fail is... How do I refill? Well, I think that a lot water? of a lot of preppers or uh, those who maybe not call themselves preppers, they think, okay, we'll have a short time, short term emergency mm-hmm. for the water will be, you know, like for example, Linden City had to boil their water here in the last couple weeks, a month or so, and so a, a short emergency where they'll turn to their water supply and then refill it after that emergency is gone. And you know, our mindset, we talk a lot about mindset, is. Let's prepare for a long-term emergency, whatever that might be, mm-hmm. it, beyond two weeks, beyond two months. So, yeah, how are you, at that point, how are you going to, to obtain more drinking water and, and water to, for sanitation and you know, flushing toilets and all kinds of you know. Yeah, I think sanitation's totally forgotten. Yeah. I mean, we, we, 
especially in Utah, it's funny because so many people are like, oh, yeah, I got my freeze-dried and I've got my dehydrated foods. I'm good. Where's your water storage? Well, you're going to need a lot more water to rehydrate and reconstitute that food. Yeah, because if you're using canned food, mm-hmm. you, know, it's, you add a little bit of water to it, to like your, your, your condensed soup or whatever I don't. it might be. Yeah. You I just, don't. You just, I just... It, well, in a survival situation, yeah, you don't have to. No, just normal. I don't. Really? You don't? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's milk, right? I mean, you could reconstitute some milk and then... No, if it's canned foods... You just eat it right out of the can? I just eat it right out of the can. Hmm. Uh, like, that's one of my favorites. Really? That's uh, I, that's my too little... strong for me. I guess I'm uh, kind of brainwashed. Do what the li- the instruction. Follow the instructions. No, like your <laughs> your your standard um, chicken noodle soup mm-hmm. says add a, cu- add a can of water. Yeah. Uh, your tomato soup, add yep. a can of water. I'm like, yeah, it takes too long. <laughs> I'm like, in a survival situation, do I need that extra water to constitute my food, or do I want to just drink it straight? So I'd rather of, just drink it straight. That kind of leads me back to the Lego movie, right? Okay. You know how uh, Emmett, yes, his name, Emmett, he always follows the instructions okay. on, the, on, the, on the labels. So, like Scott, you know, he's, he's opening my eyes here a little bit, you know. You don't have to follow the instructions when it comes to food prep, you know. Well, I like certain taste things right. you want to follow the instructions. I mean, if you're, you're eating a, a sea urchin, there's certain ways you're supposed to do it, right? Right, but, right. Um, let, let's take this caller. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting off track here. Hey, thanks for calling in K-Talk. What have you got for us? Well, well, I think that everybody at least every six months should go out on a trial run with just a backpack. Yes. And some water. And that's it. Go out into the mountains and stay there for the weekend and survive. So just a you couple days, two or three days. You can do it in a disaster. What? Just two or three days, I guess, right? Yeah. And then if you can do that, then you should be able to hear. I've been in everything better. Mm-hmm. I haven't been in a, I've been a, in a fire, a hurricane, a tornado, but I've never been in an earthquake. Mm-hmm. Those are, are not particularly fun, depending on the, the, the level. I I've been we'll in quite a few someday. when I live in California. But, but you know, yeah. Elaine has an absolutely great point, is that uh, we need to test out our systems and mm-hmm. see how they work and see where we're, we're short and see where maybe we're a little heavy. And, yeah. and you, know, you know, some of us, you know, part is part of our religion, we do fast, right? And so we know right. what that, that's, know what that that's like. Yeah. Fast, yeah. Yeah. And so, but yeah, that's kind of a, definitely an extended... Uh, fast is to go a couple of days and and try and learn how to forage for food. Eat, you know, and of course eat some you know acorns or whatever you can find around here. And and uh, well, it's funny. It's not a it's not a fun thing to do. It's funny because if you go to you go back to your your school days, right? Elementary school, they had fire drills. Mm-hmm. You know, they had tornado drills. They had you know, all the types of drills that you're you need to prepare for in that neighborhood, that area. Mm-hmm. They have those drills. And then as soon as we leave school. We stopped doing, yeah, drills. We doing drills, and what Elaine's talking about is doing your own drill. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. More than just hey, for family home evening this week, we're going to talk about fire safety. This is where we meet up if there's a fire, and then don't touch the doorknobs. Okay, goodbye, everybody. Have some snacks. You know that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about actually setting off the fire alarm, mm-hmm. getting everyone to their positions, doing it when everyone doesn't expect it. You know, taking your bag and going actually out. And seeing how long you know that'll that'll last you over that two days, does it really have enough calories for you? Does outside, it really have enough water for you? Go outside to your main breaker box, turn that breaker off, and then tell the wife and kids, "Hey, you know what? Power's out for the weekend. We got to figure out how we're gonna survive. How long we're gonna get along?" Absolutely. And I think that's one of the keys is is testing yourself and testing your mm-hmm. your equipment, and especially when it comes to water. If you don't know how to use a water filter properly, you're gonna get yourself sick. Well, then there's also the other methods for preparing your water. I mean, you yeah. can you can boil your water, you d- you can distill your water, um, you can use a solar still. I mean, there's so many different little ways you can do it, mm-hmm. um, or you can use pump filters, or you can do gravity fed filters. Or the key is is to clean it, mm-hmm. get get the bacteria out of there that your body can't handle, right? And then drink it. And if that means to kill it, and that's the only way you can do it is to boil it and mm-hmm. kill it. Boil it and kill it. It's not going to taste great mm-hmm. most of the time. But that's why you have packets of, I don't know, Tang or whatever you yep. want to have. I think everybody uses those little uh, uh, Gatorade packets Gatorade, now right. and all the other fun stuff from Mevo. Grab a couple of those, throw them in your kit. Flavored that's good to have. Water. Flavored water because then it, that'll take away that. It gives you some electrolytes as well. Yeah. So, yeah, I think Elaine's right. Get out. Test yourself for a couple of days. You know, mm-hmm. Sh- Shane's right. Turn off the power for a couple of days. See how well you fare. You know, our friends that were up in, in Clifton if a week and a half ago when the storm hit, mm-hmm. you know, they, lo- they lost power for a little bit. Mm-hmm. They had some pipes freeze in the, bed, in the bathroom. Um, so what are you going to do if that were to happen to yeah. you? Turn your power off in the winter. Uh, that's a 
<laughs> that's a challenge. <laughs> yeah. You know, because you're going to have to turn off your water and make sure yep. your pipes are empty. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to basically winterize your home mm-hmm. and live in those conditions for two days. And then, obviously, turn the heat back on once it warmed up, crank on the water. But be smart about it. Don't destroy what you, yeah, want, what you currently have. You just have. might uh, break, bust some pipes there, so be very careful. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So. so, and it's not just having water on hand. Um, mm-hmm. That we're, we're talking about, right? Have a plan to get more. Have a plan to get more. You mm-hmm. know, be strategic about it. I know where the creek is right by my house. Well, mm-hmm. It's not right by my house, but within a few hundred yards, there's a creek. I know how to get to it and how to get water out of it. I know that there's a wa- retention pond the other direction. Mm-hmm. I know how to get to it and I, had, I know how to get water from it. I also know where the creek comes from, so I have multiple access points to get to. But in a disaster, it's going to become... People are going to be fighting over those resources, mm-hmm. right? And so you have to learn how to work together with your neighbors to get everybody their needs, um, as opposed to just going Rambo and thinking, well, I'm going to take over the water. Well, someone can go further up the stream and block it all off and mm. take the water, and now you've got it a bigger a problem. battle until... Yeah. What you want to do is find solutions as a community, find solutions as a neighborhood. Um, basically, they become your tribe, and you're all working together to survive. A lot safer that way, too. Absolutely. So um, in talking, I guess, the really basics of prepping is, um, you know, obviously shelter, water, food. We can talk a little bit about food. And we, yeah. we kind of, maybe we talk a little bit, to, I wouldn't say too much about food, because uh, like you say, it's, it's, um, you can live for three weeks without food. Um, it's not going to be a fun yeah, three it's, weeks it's at all. The key is you can survive. You can survive. That's right? the correct word. You're not you going to be live. all like sunshine, rainbows, yeah. and lollipops, and unicorns. It's... <laughs> It's not going to be fun, but yeah. it's doable. Uh, you know, we are quite incredible survival machines. Mm-hmm. We, if when you know become we become more more resourceful in a survival environment. Um, but yeah, let's take this call before we, we lose him here. You want to do that? Hey, thanks for calling in K Talk. We've got just a couple minutes left before the break. What have you got for us? Uh, there's a YouTube video out. Uh, the guy goes by the bearded uh, outdoorsman or something like that. Okay, he just did a video that. Uh, challenge the notion that people are actually going out in the woods like on these survival shows and surviving. Mm-hmm. He brings up how many calories are necessary a day and how many you can actually get from you know mm-hmm. what you eat. Yeah. And his contention was that without modern food and equipment, that to maintain about three thousand calories a day. And he cited you know if you get a if you get a deer, like that caloric intake will last you about I don't know, say about two weeks. Uh, yep. Bears about the same. If it's, if it's just blueberries. He said you'd have to eat 26 pounds of blueberries every day to keep the calories up. He <laughs> says you couldn't. He says acorns. Yeah. That's two and a half pounds of acorns in the flour every day. You have to gather them, grind them, and eat them. So he, his point was that survival on food is a 24 hour an hour a day thing mm-hmm. if you're truly in, in a survival, survival mode. Situation. Yeah. Yep. And, and the thing people is, really don't appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. And the, and the the people on these shows, they lose a lot of weight. They may be there right. for you know fifty, right. sixty days, but they end up losing quite a bit of weight, even oh, though because yeah. they're foraging, they're just they're really trying to just survive and expend minimal calories. Yeah, well, and he, he brought up the point of a man who went a year on only drinking water. He was like he weighed five hundred pounds or something mm-hmm. like that, and mm-hmm. in that year he lost some incredible amount of weight. But for a year, all he did was. Pretty much water and vitamins. Yeah, and, yeah. I've and, read that story. Protein. He had he had an orange every two days. Um, okay. The juices of it. Mm-hmm. He didn't eat it. He, he, I'm like, you need the fiber, dude. <laughs> and it was vitamins <laughs> and water. Um, but the for the first was, forty it, days, it was just vitamins and water. Yeah. yeah. And, and if all you're doing is losing pounds, sure, you can go on a, a year fast, and if you got enough weight, you'll make it through. But you didn't survive. All you did was fast for a year and, and lay around mm-hmm. all together. You know. Yeah. Uh, People don't I think, really appreciate that too much. Thank you so much for your call. I think you made a really valid point. Um, we we often over overestimate our skills and abilities and underestimate the situation and what can actually mm-hmm. happen and what we really need to survive. Yeah. A lot of these food storage companies will sell you this big, huge pack of food storage that it's 750 calories a day. Mm-hmm. And that's yes. all it is. Yeah, you're not even and, maintaining it. And that's, calories. yeah, that's the same amount of calories that they gave on average um, to the to the Jews in Germany, mm-hmm. in Auschwitz. To starve them to death. I mean, that's the, they, that kept them alive, mm-hmm. enough to keep them alive. And that's, that's the reality is we need more than that. We've got another caller. Let's take this call. Hey, thanks for calling K-Talk. we got about a minute before the break. What have we got for us? Are you there? I think we lost you. Oh, yeah. hey, oh uh, you're there. Oh, there you yeah, go. Good. Yeah, appreciate it. Hey, you know, uh, I uh, 
was uh, paying attention to your uh, discussion of the um, uh, uh, the five hundred. Would you say a five hundred pound man that lost all that weight? Yeah, something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was going to say there's a, a famous comedian, Dick Gregory, and he's he's done a whole lot of uh, protest fasts. And it's actually very dangerous to go uh, it is. Uh, even 40 days. I think you start to have brain damage after, like, 30 days. Uh, there's, you know, you need to replace uh, uh, all sorts of different uh, minerals in your body just to keep the electrolytes mm-hmm. up and whatnot. So it's, yeah. you know, it, this is, it's, it's not a, a joy to, you know, it, it might be glamorous to think about, but it's not any fun while you're doing it. Absolutely. No. Yeah. The other thing I was going to raise, uh, have you ever been down to Four Corners, uh, the Anasazi ruins down there and the museum in there? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever noticed. They have a section in there, and they were talking about, uh, trying to think it was 600,000 years ago, a long time ago. The, the oceans were much higher, and they basically ran right through Utah, from Texas all the way up to uh, Washington State, if I remember right. Yep. There was a, a, a waterway through there that was probably, you know, a couple of hundred miles wide. And uh, hey, we're going to have to cut you off. Can you hang on during the break? Oh, sure, yeah. Okay, we'll hold, hold on. We'll be right back. You guys are listening to Prepper Talk Radio here on KTalk AM 630, brought to you by Survival Medical, the only first aid kit tougher than nature. We'll be right back. Welcome back to KTalk Radio. You're listening to Prepper Talk Radio. Here on the new ktalkmedia.com, and we've got a guest on. We're, we're just starting a conversation. Let's bring him back on the air. Are you still there? Oh, I am, uh, but I'm not your guest, am I? <laughs> well, you're one of our fantastic guests. Our callers, Holy every God. caller is a guest. You, you're welcome into our little studio home. Nice for save there, Scott. One to five minutes, and, and we get to talk to you. So, yes, yeah. you are a guest. Holy kazoozes. Hey, well, uh, yeah, I was just kind of interested in that whole idea of... Uh, I, I haven't been to that museum in five or more years, so I, I'm trying to think of the, the duration of time that this happened. But it, if I remember right, there were two different uh, periods of time in a, the continent of America's uh, a flooding. And one of them showed this waterway that basically went, I, I'm going to say from the Gulf of Mexico, but it was something bigger than that. Uh, and it, it uh, extended kind of in an angle of, uh, to the northwest that basically exited at um, uh, Washington State. And uh, so there was a lot of, uh, of uh, section of, of the United States. It was basically two different portions, mm-hmm. California and uh, probably uh, Nevada and uh, parts of Oregon uh, were above water. But the idea that there would be a massive waterway there, that was, it was pretty impressive. And um, I, I, had all, I used to live in Grand Junction, and I had always heard that the Grand Canyon was formed when a giant lake had, uh, had busted open, and then this massive outflow of water had created the uh, Grand Canyon. But to look at this, uh, this map, you'd have to wonder whether or not, um, uh, you know, whether or not there was some other uh, older uh, portion that had happened. So how does this was... relate to survival? So let me let's segue well, that just, back into there. Just thinking in terms of uh, if if you look at global warming, for example, they're saying that the oceans are going to rise uh, okay. in in the uh, in the short term. Uh, I think they're talking about in the next thirty years, the uh, oceans are going to rise two meters. So get away from the coastlines. Yeah, yeah, they're talking five feet. But when you start looking at the idea of um, uh, this waterway that would cut through the central part of the country okay. uh, or the western central, uh, you know, that's a whole different way of looking at it. Uh, you know, to, to find the sections of maps, what where really are the high grounds? Okay, uh, so I kind of feel like we're totally off topic. I'm not, I'm, <laughs> no offense, but I'm trying to figure out how this has, we're, we're kind of going into geolo- geography, geology, waterways, we're not talking about. Well, I mean, in terms of prepper, I mean, if basically, I don't go. know if you, I don't know if you've ever heard this um, uh, description. As the Earth revolves, you know, it, it rotates, right? Mm-hmm. And it and the equator pulls water toward the equator. 
Okay. And so it's it's not smooth and round, you know, for the entire circumference of the Earth. Right. It's actually pooled higher toward the equator. Yep. And if if the uh, currents, um, uh, if the ocean's currents stopped, then there would be this huge sloshing effect uh, because uh, the I, I don't. I'm trying to think of the famous movie that came out about 10 years ago where there was this massive uh, uh, meltdown of, of the North Pole, which turned in, it stopped the rotation of the currents, okay. and then everything froze solid, like in a, in a matter of minutes, so to speak. And, uh, and so that same kind of sloshing effect, that would cause that sloshing effect. It would turn to ice, basically, but it would also slosh. And so Interesting. It, it's not that the oceans would rise five feet. It might rise 40 feet uh, at the coastline. You might have massive tsunamis, not just in a localized area, but okay. in a So you're know, still completely totality. off, yeah, off so topic, though. We're, we're <laughs> so all of you in Seattle who are listening along the coastline... Move. Yeah, but you probably want to. Yeah, I think, well, the point we're trying to make today is we're really trying to help people get back to the basics yeah. and, and kind of wrap up the basics. And, and what we've gotten off topic yeah, on thanks is for your talking call about um, polar shifts and we're talking about what happens if the Earth revol- revolution changes. And, and that's, in, you know, that's one of the, that's actually, all speculation one of the things that we don't we wanted want to, to jump into today. Yeah, one of the things we want to talk about today is, is becoming, is that a prepper is someone who's aware. Right. right, and that's part of prepping. That's part of the basic intro, or prepping one hundred and one, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. So, being aware of those types of things is very interesting, and you know, I appreciate you sharing those things with us and and waking us up. And that's you know, being aware. That's a very obviously very important. So, so thanks for those topics. But I think the, the key is is situationally aware, aware of what's going on around you, mm-hmm. aware of what's going on in the world, the things you can actually do something about. Yeah, and that you can respond to. Mm-hmm. You know, if the, if. If that were to actually happen, if we were to have that movie happen again, uh, I think it was 2012. The movie, yeah, 2012. And if that were to happen again, and or not again, but in real life, you know, yeah. much of us would be absolutely screwed within seconds. It wouldn't really matter. Yeah. You know. So what we're talking about really today is focusing on. Okay, you've got your shelter, you've got your water, you get your food. You know, the mindset is now okay. Now I need to be aware. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's the same principle of you don't walk into a, a, a riot thinking it's going to be a peaceful way th- mm. way home. You make your way around it. You wait, Yeah, you work around it. Mm. You look for indicators that are going to, that show you that there's danger there. Mm-hmm. And so we need it as a populace, we need to be a little more aware of that and then be eager to help our neighbors through those tough times as well. And I think a part that fits right into that uh, of being aware is, is self-defense. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like I mentioned earlier, there's so many things we could get into in the intro, intro or prepping 101, first aid. We could talk about sanitation, the tools, your bug out bags, which we touched on briefly. But uh, being aware, I think, is the very one of the very first steps of becoming a prepper. Yep. Is realizing, okay, there are some unstable situations going on and uh, things are fragile. And, well, what would happen if the power went out? And then, ding, 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 you start to become a prepper at that point. Yeah, and the, and the the key is is to become anti fragile, mm-hmm. right? There are so many things in this world that are designed and actually created to become fragile. Yeah. Our car is very fragile, right? There's so many different mo- components inside there that cause it to break down. You know, our home is is somewhat fragile mm-hmm. because it relies on electricity, mm-hmm. you know, or it relies on gas or mm-hmm. it relies on propane. However, you've got your home set up, there are things that it relies things that on that are outside of our own control, know? our own scope that we can, that we can't handle. And so, for us, becoming anti fragile is basically creating solutions so that if a problem occurs, you know, it's it's like if there was a problem, yo, I'll solve it. You know, that they'll hook from <laughs> yo, DJ. I'll solve it. I don't remember which which <laughs> rapper that I was. I see where you're going with that. The the whole point is is we need to plan, pre plan um, contingencies. And we need to be aware of what's going on around us That's and something. cognizant of the behaviors, not just the geopolitical, but the so- the society that we live in here, like specifically in Utah, your route to work, mm. you probably go on autopilot every day. Mm. You know, I've done that. You know, my wife will be like, where are you going? I'm like, oh, yeah. I was, I was, I was driving autopilot. down the street. I was heading to K-Talk all of a sudden, and it's mm. Sunday, and I'm supposed to go into church. You know, and she'll laugh at me, and it, we, that happens to all of us at a different times in our life, and mm. we, we kind of get on autopilot. But are we on autopilot every day, all day? And mm. I hope you're not. I hope you're aware. I hope you're taking time to study what's going on around. Mm-hmm. To be aware of it, but to to also be contingency planning for it, yeah. and for what can happen or what could happen. 
you know, our hope is always that nothing, nothing bad happens. But our lives have taught us the alternate, that bad stuff always happens. It's just how we respond to it that makes up the next phase of our life. We have to accept that, oh, that, the, the thought that, oh, that'll never happen here. That'll never happen to me. You know, that's just uh, being naive and uh, not being aware and fully awake. Uh, yeah, we hope that never happens, but it's better to, to be prepared than the, the alternative. Absolutely. So if you've got thoughts along the lines of, you know, mental preparedness, mental toughness, I mm-hmm. think is one of the more important things, yep. and positivity. Um, we've got about eight minutes left in the show. We'd love to take your calls as well and talk to you about this. But I think one of the, the first thing is, is really to, to pull off the blinders. Mm-hmm. Um, when I first got into prepping, I was very naive. Mm-hmm. You know, I've been prepping most of my life to one degree, but I was very naive about what was going on in the world. Same here. Absolutely. Um, And so that was the first step is kind of pulling the blinders back and opening up to new sources. Different possibilities. You know, looking at what's going on in the world, being more aware of my surroundings. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's peeling back the blinders. You know, one of the the best websites I find for that is Drudge Report. Mm -hmm. You know, because you can actually see credible news, what's going on. Also, Around the world and not just here in our yeah. neck of the woods. I also love WikiLeaks. Mm-hmm. You know, they're one of the only news sources that have won every court mm-hmm. case they've ever been in mm-hmm. to prove that their information's correct. Here's a situation that I've, I've found myself in. And not really a situation, but something that I've noticed that actually was pointed out to me that I didn't notice right off the bat. Okay. Um, I had a, a, a cousin that said, hey, have you noticed all the robins? Yeah. And um, and it's like first of January, end of December. Like what? Robins? Anyway, they don't usually come back until February or late February, late maybe February, early, early March, March, somewhere yeah. around there, uh, depending on the on the on the weather. But uh, right now, around my house, I literally have hundreds and hundreds of robins, and, and that's not normal. And that's not normal. So, and what that means, I don't know, and I don't want to infer anything. But did I notice on my own, or did someone have to? bring that up to me and say, hey, you know, this is, this is odd. This is, what does this mean? You know, maybe we don't want to read anything into that, but was I aware enough to notice that on my own? It's the apocalypse. It's, it's, abs- it's, it's Trumpocalypse, right? It's Trumpocalypse. Okay. Let's take this. We got a caller. Let's take the call. Hey, thanks for calling K Talk. What have you got for us on uh, awareness? We lose you? Hello? Yes. Hello. You're on the you. air. Oh, okay. I'm just, thinking about your robins so there is climate change it is happening well we we know that the world is always changing there's hot and cold it's always happening it's going through those phases those are natural but there's also the man-made issues that are happening which speed and slow that process Uh, what was that it's not human caused or yeah that's correct yeah and you know, we do need to be good stewards, obviously, of the planet. But, uh, you know, obviously we look at the sun. And we've had, you know, Ben Davidson on before telling us, okay, w- what's happening with the, with the sun is directly related to the earth. So that's not where I wanted to take the conversation. I did, but, but, you know, I appreciate your call. But, you know, maybe what's happening where the robins are in winter, r- r- they go to winter right now, maybe that's cold and they get the signal. Hey, you know, let's go back north because it seems like uh, it, it's time because it's just gotten just cold down there. I'm not much of a prepper, but I've always been a, uh, a person that does a lot of cleansing with my body. Mm-hmm. And um, spirulina is amazing when you are juice fasting because it removes the radiation out of okay. your body. And wheatgrass juicing. And you can I live, as long as there's juicing. sunshine, mm-hmm. you can live off fresh green food every day. And yes. you can grow it in your house in a window. Fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for your call. Thank Good, you. Great insights. Thank you very much. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it's interesting. We have we get to a point in our lives, I think we, we get comfortable, mm-hmm. right? We're always seeking that. And sometimes we get comfortable in that process of always seeking comfort or always seeking happiness, the pursuit mm-hmm. of happiness that everyone kind of focuses, I think, too much on thinking they've got to go find it. And the reality is, is it's something that's homegrown. It's something we create for ourselves. Mm-hmm. It's um, true. And that's what peace is. And that's what preparedness does for so many of us is it creates in us the ability to have more peace because we are prepared, mm-hmm. you know, and that's part of that mindset is, is if you're not out searching for something else so hard that you're missing all the other signs of, of what's going on around you, you know, then by not being so focused on that, you can actually open your eyes and take some time to see really what's going on. And I, yeah. you know, your friend that, that pointed that out to you, they're they have that ability because 
they're not so intently focused on something else. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't have to chase down one sole purpose in our lives. You know, we need to have that well-rounded life so that we're not blinded when something else happens. We're not blindsided when yeah. something else happens or things change. And we recognize the changes around us uh, that um, can affect us, either affect us directly or mm-hmm. indirectly. Um, so I guess that's my, my challenge for you today at the end of the day is, is get out of your little box, turn off the autopilot, and no, start to notice things. Yeah. Uh, it, will, it will not only maybe wake you up to the need for prepping, for preparing for a certain event, but it will also help to keep you safer in your own little environment, wherever you may oh, go. Yeah. Well, it's, it's funny because it's like, uh, as we talked a little bit about global warming, right? Ooh, global warming. Climate well, when, change, I was, yeah. when I was in it, the, well, they changed the name all the time on exactly. us. But when I was a kid in the 80s, what were they talking about? We're going to have ice, ice caps age. everywhere. Yep. We're going back an into ice an ice age. age. Yep. In just 40 years, less than 40 years, how wrong is our freaking government? Yep, it's all media. How That's stupid all. Yep. do they think we all are that we forget that? And guess what? Most of the population is forgetting that. Yep. Yeah, you know, exactly. Think for yourself. Think for yourself. Be open-minded to what's mm-hmm. really going on and allow yourself to study from multiple sources. Don't go to one place and think that's the whole truth mm-hmm. when it comes to news because there is no such thing. Mm-hmm. You know, Especially nowadays. Oh, yeah. Especially nowadays. And it's funny because I find there's more truth in all the smaller groups than I find in the large groups. Mm-hmm. Especially when s- the large groups start bowing towards their media money. You know, oh, we've got to make money to hit mm-hmm. profits and we're publicly traded, so that's the important thing. You know, we've got to remember to stay aware, stay open, and and always be searching for truth. Um, that's ca- part of the key of being a prepper. So thank you for joining us this week. We, we're out of time. We really appreciate all the callers that have called in. And as always, we're brought to you by Survival Medical. That's survival-medical.com. Check them out. Get your family prepared. Get them protected. And get them all the gear they need when, uh, when crap hits the fan. You want a good first aid kit, and they've got one. Thanks for listening, everybody. Thanks, guys.